the Onefinity CNC machine. And I thought I would do a video about setting it up and some of my opinions and thoughts on using it. I'm new to CNC's and this is not sponsored by Onefinity. So I just wanted to bring you my opinions of this whole process. If you want to skip the unboxing, I'll have timestamps down below to some of the different sections in the video. So feel free to skip to what you want to see. As of this video, I have not set up the dust boot. So if you need information on that, I'm sure there are other videos out there that could help you with it. I will say I was impressed with how well everything was boxed and packaged. It had this form fitting foam that was around everything. And even though the outside of a couple of the boxes had a couple punctures, it looked like everything was safe and the way it should be. Each of the three rails weighs between 40 and 50 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. Uh, but it's not too bad to manage each one by itself. And one quick note about the boxes, I would keep them if I were you. I'm not sure if you're like me and you keep all large boxes for items like this, but I know some companies have very specific boxes and the foam that goes in them. And if you happen to need to request another one to send it back for repair or replacement, it will cost a couple hundred dollars. Overall though, everything was labeled very well and easy to understand. There are really only four packs of hardware for the entire assembly and I ended up picking up this auxiliary controller and I'm glad I have. At this point, I've got all of the parts out of the boxes. There were three boxes total, uh, very simple to unbox. Looks like everything was packed really well. Um, got all the electronics here, a few cords. The, the two main side rails, and then this is the cross rail, I guess, that holds the actual gantry. I've got it backwards here. Um, the gantry is back here, uh, control box, and then this is for the dust boot stuff here. Um, pretty exciting. Not, not difficult to unbox, but let's get it set up. I wanna mention I'm gonna be using this table as my CNC table, but it could work really well as an outfeed table or just a workbench. I'll leave a link below to this build. Uh, I published a video on making this and I've got free plans available. So go check that out if you wanna make this. So I've got all the pieces up here now. We're actually gonna use this uh, X slider here, the X rail, to square up the whole machine. It's just sitting on there right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this squared up visually and put some bolts in here so that it's bolted to the Y rails. And then we're going to do a little maneuver here to get everything square. I just used a tape measure to make sure that this Y rail that was toward the right hand side was spaced from the edge of the table the same from front to back. There is kind of an indent where the X rail sits down into the Y rail and I flush it up on that one end before putting in some of the bolts that bolts the rails together. Then I moved to the other side and did the same. If it sounds like I'm talking to myself, I'm not really. My buddy Drew Fisher was actually on a call with me, helping me through some of these steps. You see, he had already set up his machine and he was willing to help. He and I do a podcast together called We Built a Thing. So if you've not already checked that out and you're into podcasts, definitely go give it a listen. I anchored one screw in the Y rail on the right hand side. Then I manually pulled the gantry, the X rail toward me. There's a lot of resistance, but just pull it all the way forward until both sides are touching the front. Then if both sides are touching the front, you have squared up the front and you need to put a screw into the Y rail on the left side. Just a single screw for now. Now it's time to square up the back. Just push the gantry all the way to the back very slowly. Again, there's a lot of resistance. And by doing this, that X rail is actually going to square up the two Y rails. At this point, you can add in all the rest of the screws. There should be four in each of the four corners. Now it's time to attach the gantry. To access the bolt holes, I actually had to wind the gantry up a little bit manually. There's three different settings that you can use. There's a low, a medium, and a high. I just chose the medium one because if you can't decide which parking spot to go into, you just park in the middle, right? Next up, we're going to add the spindle or the trim router. Remove the cap from the top and I actually had to wind the gantry back down a little bit to make sure that the trim router could fit into the collet. 
it was a really tight fit there so i just grabbed a screwdriver to pry open the jaws of that just a little so that the router could start to slide in slide it all the way down until it bumps against the housing also if you'll note the power button for the router needs to be facing right then just secure it with the four machine bolts that were included Onefinity really thought of something clever here, and they gave you an extra slot in the cap that you took off earlier for the cord of your router to go through so that it gets kind of toward the back side of your gantry. So put it through that slot and reattach the cap and then plug up the motor. Next up is the mount for the monitor. Don't be a dummy like me and install this incorrectly the first time. It's not that difficult. There are four bolts that install it into the Y rail that's on the left hand side, but just take your time, watch what you're doing, put it in the right way. I will say this monitor stand is something that I'm not crazy about. It looks like 3D printed plastic or something, but it's pretty flimsy. It seems like not much of a bump or a torque and your monitor might fall off or the whole mount would break. Not to mention it's basically pointed at my belly button because I'm tall and I'm just going to have to redo this whole mount. I will be revisiting it and making some other type of mounting solution. It's time to start plugging in cables. This is where this machine was really shining because everything was labeled very well. You have a Y1 and Y2 for your two different Y rails and there's plugs that you can see. I've got close-ups here of where they connect. On the controller side, it's M1, 2, and 3. Everything's labeled really, really well. Then you use the other cables to connect the X rail. There are actually two ports in the X rail that you saw there and connect everything up and it's time to boot it up. There are a couple of power cords you have to connect there obviously goes. and then there are a few cords that go into the monitor. I think they're pretty self-explanatory so I'm not gonna go over that yeah. here. If you're having trouble with the controller actually turning on when you flip the switch, be That's sure good. that okay. the emergency stop is not pressed down. Mine actually was so as soon as I pulled it back up, everything was able to start up. When the machine boots up, it's first going to ask you if you want to home the machine. Go ahead and click home. Make sure that nothing is sticking up out of the way to where the rails will hit it, and it should perform this just fine. However, this is where I ran into one thing that was an issue. What is it doing? It's not stopping. Apparently this happens occasionally, and let me try to explain it the best way that I can. The way that it homes itself is it goes up until it bumps the actual housing at which point it senses a certain amount of current and stops. It does the same thing on the X-Rail going toward the left to go and bump and when it senses the current it stops. Same thing going forward. For some machines that tolerance is set just a little bit too high. So even when it's sensing a little bit of the current when it bumps, it's not enough to tell it to stop. I'm not gonna go into all of the menu options and how to fix this in this video. I will have detailed instructions about it in the written article published on my website. So if you are having trouble with your machine with this same thing, click the link in the description below and go check out that article. To set up Wi-Fi, click the menu and then go under the admin tab and touch network. Then scroll to the bottom under the Wi-Fi setup and be sure that it's set to client. And then you want to put in your SSID for your Wi-Fi network. Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> then it will go through a series of rebooting. And when it comes back up, you should be able to verify that it has your network ID there. I didn't have any trouble connecting it to my Wi-Fi, but my buddy Drew that I mentioned earlier did have some trouble. He found a little Wi-Fi adapter that plugs into one of the USB ports, so I'll link it below if you end up having trouble. I plugged up the auxiliary controller that came with it, and it's really cool because each of the different colored buttons is a different speed for the toggles. And I was so excited, I just had to show somebody. I called my wife out there, it was cold in the shop, and she humored me by watching it for just a second and then went right back in. Well, I'm pretty excited. I got it up and running. Um, I've got a couple things left to do. I need to uh, screw down the controller. I'm probably gonna go get a power strip and put here on the side. That way it's all buttoned up and taken care of. Not much left to do on this before I can start cutting.
I wanted to do a little more cable management, so there were a few things that I needed to take care of. One of them was mounting the router cord up to where it was out of the way. For me, the furthest point from where I was going to be plugging it in was setting the machine all the way forward and to the right. Then I gave it just a little bit of slack before using a zip tie to secure it to a loop in the X rail. And I was already tired of seeing all of the cables sitting on top of the table. So I drilled a hole in front of each of the Y rails, a little bit larger hole in front of the controller and behind the controller. Then I just fed through all of the cables from underneath. Uh, the reason I needed the hole in the back of the table was the router cord was not long enough to go in the same hole in front of the controller and still reach all the way back to the power strip. I got all of the cables plugged back in and in the spot where they needed to be. And after operating the machine a little bit, I realized that the hole in the back where the router power cord goes gets a lot of motion. And so I used a round over on the top of that just to make sure it's not gonna be wearing out that cord. I plugged everything in underneath and added two screws to the frame so that I could also zip tie two of those cords that were hanging down. Then you couldn't even see any cords from the front of the machine. Yeah, that looks much better. A quick shout out to Spider Products. They sent me this stool to try out and I'm really thankful because I don't have any stools in my shop, but not anymore. Now I can sit and watch this machine work while I'm doing a long carve or just get off my feet for a few. Thanks Spider. All right, now let's see it cut a little bit before we end this. I cut out a little sign just to get a quick win with this machine as a first project and I'm looking forward to many, many more. Well, that's it for this one guys. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've really been enjoying this. I've had it set up for a few days and this is a really solid machine. Uh, I'm going to be working on some clamping solutions for down here and I'm probably going to have to mount this monitor at a different spot because that one's basically pointed at my belly button because I'm tall. Um, be sure to check out my video about making this table for it. I've got free plans available for that on my website. I'll have a link down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.